Thank you, Chair. And uh, first, I will have to check that I have the right speech with me. I once gave a speech in a seminar, it was a very formal seminar with everyone wearing dark suits. I spoke for a few minutes and then I realized, no, this is the wrong speech from my friend's wedding where I was the best man. So it was a lovely one. But now I think I have the correct one here and uh, this is going to be a slightly different tone, not as lovely. And uh, I will start it with saying the Arctic is a battlefield of megatrends. And the only way to win this battle is to use another megatrend to fight it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the president and CEO of Destia, a major Finnish infrastructure company here in the Arctic, I face this battle on a daily basis. The outcome of the battle has a significant impact on the company, its owners, and also its employees. The outcome of the battle is though even more important personally as the father of three youngsters. What does our northern playground look like when the war of the megatrends is over? I think these issues are discussed in the world media on a daily basis. They are the focus area of research of the top universities all over the world, and the headlines throughout the world were filled with news about it during this week. Which war and what megatrends is he talking about, you might ask to yourself. Does it really have anything to do with the topic of this seminar? Well, I think it actually does. Urbanization is, is one of those megatrends, and it has affected the Arctic for decades, especially here in Finland. Since the 1960s, people have left their homes in the far north to move to cities, to find a job and a new life. I left the Finnish Lapland as a child with my family to move to Sweden, and that was the case for thousands of other families as well. The business cycles, good times or even deep depressions only have a minor and very temporary impact on the urbanization. It continues in all business and economic situations. The politics hardly affect it. No matter which political party is running the country, the flow of people from the north has just one direction, to the cities. So really you start wondering who is going to want, be the one switching off the lights up in the Arctic. Is the urbanization going to win the battle of the Arctic? But there is another megatrend, the scarcity of natural resources on our planet as well. We are depending on minerals and energy, especially here in Europe. Investment potential related to mining, oil, gas, wind and hydropower is found here in the Arctic. Fishing and tourism create opportunities for additional new investments as well. And as a matter of fact, the Guggenheim partners have been estimating that the Arctic investment potential could be up to one trillion US dollars the coming 15 years. We're talking about 1,000 billion US dollars, a huge amount of money. The Arctic Business Forum yearbook, which is a product of the Lapland Chamber of Com Commerce, has estimated the investment need of the Arctic Europe to average more than 9 billion euros annually for the next seven years. In comparison, you could think about the infrastructure here in Finland. This is almost twice the volume of the total investments in infrastructure in this country. The climate change is a threat not only for the Arctic, but also for the whole planet. And it's, it's actually proceeding clearly faster than we usually expect. Although the consequences of the climate change are serious, it could also open up the northeast passage north of us. This creates great opportunity for Finland and Scandinavia to be the logistic route connecting Europe with the rest of the world through the trans-European network of traffic. Ladies and gentlemen, the way to fight a megatrend is to use another megatrend. 
the scarcity of national resources the rapidly proceeding climate change could actually change the course of urbanization in our north. The investment potential and developing logistic routes create new opportunities for people in the Arctic to continue their lives in their homes. In some way, I think this situation reminds me of a time in the late 80s. It was the, shortly the end of the Cold War, and there was Mr. Bush, the senior, going to meet his colleague in Moscow, Mr. Gorbachev. And of course, during that time in the late 80s, he already knew that their situation in the Soviet Union was not going that well. So there were some difficulties, problems in the country seen already. And he decided to ask Mr. Gorbachev, how does the situation look like? And he said, well, Mr. Gorbachev, could you describe it with one word? And Gorbachev was silent for a little while. And then he said, good. Well, Mr. Bush was really surprised about this answer, and he said, well, uh, Mr. President, could you please describe the situation with maybe two words? And then Gorbachev said, not good. <laughs> and uh, you could say that this is fairly similar to the situation that we are facing up north, because the investments in the region are clearly an opportunity. So you could say that the situation is good. But they could be a risk if not done in a responsible manner. And if you don't do it in a responsible manner, then it's not good. And this is the reason why the Arctic Economic Council endorses the in intent of six principles of the Arctic Investment Protocol. The first principle is really to build resilient societies through economic development. And this is done with long-term investment, not only short-term, but long-term investment view, creating new job opportunities and skills for residents and promoting economic growth up in the north. You could take one example from one of our Western countries, because the development of the Goliath oil field outside of Hammerfest in, in the Arctic Norway was turn, has turned Hammerfest to a very vivid Arctic town, clearly an upgrade for the whole city. And the field's Italian operator has been very clear in its demand for local content. Over 50 companies with part of their organization in Hammerfest are engaged as subcontractors. The second principle is to respect and include local communities, people and authorities through open consultation aligned with also domestic laws. The European Arctic has a significant renewable energy development potential. And to be realized, this demands large-scale production and investments, and this has an impact on the traditional livelihoods. By engaging a dialogue with the Sami reindeer herders SD1 plans for their new wind park, have been developed significantly from the original drafts. Clearly a solution from these discussions that they had with the Sami reindeer herders. The third principle is, is to pursue measures to protect the environment in the Arctic. The economic, economic investment analysis has to be balanced also with environmental and climate goals. This is sometimes forgotten in the process of the calculations. Operating in the harsh Arctic environment requires that we use the best possible knowledge and technology. Increased protectionism and use of restrictive measures can result in the use of the second best solutions, and this is first a threat to the nature. The fourth principle is that we should always practice very responsible and transparent business methods. Business should be conducted in a fair, legal and transparent manner and actively fighting the corruption. The fifth principle is very important to understand the impact of the investment on the commercial activity in the Arctic. Therefore, one should always integrate science and traditional ecological knowledge. Science should always be the foundations for operations in the, in the Arctic, but traditional knowledge can provide very valuable information on how to operate 
sustainably in that region. And finally, last but not least, a strong pan-Arctic collaboration sharing the best practices should be emphasized. This is really team playing where cross-border dialogue is clearly a solution. So while the conditions across the Arctic can vary very significantly, the region faces many common challenges and we can learn a lot from each other by working across the pan-Arctic region. For instance, in the oil industry, from having and sharing these, those experiences from Norway to Alaska. So, ladies and gentlemen, the battle of the megatrends is ongoing in the Arctic. The scarcity of natural resources and the climate change could change the course of urbanization in our north. Through responsible investments in the region, we can ensure good living environment also for the future generations. Thank you.